Fingers are for moving, right? And air is always the basis of any movement. Not only will the stability and hold and balance really help with um, you know, posture and positioning, but it will help keep your fingers mobile and agile too. When we talk about facility or technical ability, that's where balance, stability, and hold will make its return. <laughs> because once again, we want to have the sense that we have stability here so that our fingers don't feel responsible for being part of the stabilization process. If the flute is rolling, this hand might say, stop rolling. This hand may say, you have to go this way. And that's a war we don't need, right? With the repertoire that we have, which is so very noty, we want ease of fingers. Fingers are for moving, right? And air is always the basis of any movement. We're always gonna have air flowing. Otherwise, I mean, I just played a really stunning shamanade. <laughs> but, you know, only it, that's between me and my fingers, I guess. <laughs> um, and as I said, tubes roll, fingers are responsible, for ups and downs. And some people like the feeling of lifting fingers. Some people like the feeling of pressing keys. I don't know, it doesn't much matter to me. I think that's a personal choice. I think the key is if we are stable, it's more likely our fingers can move in a coordinated fashion, less likely they will find themselves in tricky positions. Mm -hmm and that they're willing to work more as a team. While we do want really impeccable teamwork between our fingers, right? We should recognize that we have some digits that are stronger than others inherently and some digits that are weaker than others. A great way just to learn about that is just play your arm a little bit and see which fingers move more readily, which fingers feel connected because they are, Right? Which fingers feel like, oh, when I move that one, my neighbor wants to move, and, and so on. And then we actually can do some training for individual fingers. You did the Tafano Gobert mm -hmm. course. Do you want mm -hmm. to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think that especially if you're moving from note to note and wanting to smooth out an interval or even just a finger motion, something I really in enjoy doing is just slowing tempos down, but keeping the speed in which you change your fingers quite quick. Mm. So really noticing how you're moving your fingers from note to note and how hard you're pressing down on the keys. Once again, if we do try to hold the instrument, one exercise I like to do is if I really press hard on my thumb here and I try to move the rest of my fingers, it feels quite restrained yes. and if I press lightly the other fingers are mm. pretty free to move <laughs> so it's something to keep in mind that not only will the stability and hold and balance really help with um, you know posture and positioning but it will help keep your fingers mobile and agile too so um, I recommend really trying that exercise <laughs> and pressing your fingers down um, and without it, and just notice any tension in the fingers that might be happening mm -hmm. as you um, play through exercises like Tafanel and Gobert. And let me pick up on this idea of practicing slowly. I love that, the way you said that with quick finger connections still, mm -hmm. because slow playing is different than fast playing, right? We're talking about twitch muscling, right? There's, there are some differences. We know that from brain science. Why do we practice slowly, right? We practice slowly for a lot of reasons. We are going to learn finger connections, patterns. We're going to recognize challenges. We're going to recognize ease-filled passages. One of my favorite reasons to practice slowly is to train my ears. My ears need to know what to ask for when the notes are moving very quickly. A scale may go by, but it is still a series of note after note, whole steps, half steps. 
And by practicing slowly, we're digesting that information so that when we do move more quickly, we still have an awareness of each note that we want to listen for and sound. I call that an RO expectation. So it's expecting each note to come out. When we go into these exercises with an RL expectation, our fingers are much more intentional and usually more even and react to what's going on just a little bit less, which can cause some unevenness. Absolutely. And it's like if you're not asking to hear something, then who knows what will come out, right? We have a whole inner ear life, if you will. We have this whole ability to hear something, imagine something before we play it. And so if we will ask ourselves to be even, require ourselves to be even in slow playing, then we can start to notch up, right? We can start to get faster and faster. I do find, however, that as we notch up, we usually hit a ceiling. We hit a spot where we can't go any faster. And without getting deep into this, it is brain science that some techniques of that slower playing live within a certain part of the brain and the faster twitching, faster motions live in a different part of the brain. So we do want to feed both banks when we're practicing. If I'm not able to play an entire passage up to tempo, perhaps I could play one note to the next, making them at least closer in tempo so that I am always aware of what outcome I want, that sort of end game that I have. I don't want to get there fast. I want to take the time to process through it. But if I'm practicing an F to a G, I might do a few things with my air because I have time to do so. But if I'm practicing it quickly, it's the same air. I will be utilizing one air two notes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 